Hi everyone, welcome to the September 2023 edition of Archaeology News. I'm Rachel, your presenter, and I invite you to join me today on a journey through time as we explore the latest discoveries from the world of archaeology that are helping us piece together the puzzle of humanity's rich and diverse heritage. As someone who's studied and worked in archaeology, I have taken my years of experience and used it to spend hours carefully researching, filming, and editing this video so that you can have well-sourced, interesting, and accurate news stories on Europe's oldest pair of shoes, a Roman makeup store, and Norway's gold find of the century. Stay tuned as I delve into the past, bringing you in-depth analyses and captivating stories from the archaeological world. Okay, everyone, let's dig in. We have nine stories today in our Top Discoveries segment, which are presented in chronological order, starting with our stories farthest back in time and working our way forward. We start our journey going back 476,000 years to the Middle Pleistocene era in Zambia. A new analysis of five modified pieces of wood discovered at a site at Kalimbo Falls is pushing back the dates for both the earliest occupation of the site and the earliest evidence for woodworking giving researchers new insight into advancement of hominin technology in the Middle Pleistocene era. Preserved partially due to the waterlogged conditions of an elevated water table, the two oldest pieces of wood, which you can see here, consist of two interlocking logs joined by an intentionally cut notch. The team determined that these logs were 476,000 years old by using bioluminescence dating of sand samples collected from soil deposits around these logs. If this estimated age is correct, it means that woodworking might predate the emergence of our own species, Homo sapiens, and it highlights the intelligence of our hominin ancestors. Scientists previously believed the hominins who lived at Colombo during this time were nomadic foragers with little technological skill, but these new finds show that they were far more intelligent than we first thought. The samples are now being conserved at York Archaeological Trust in the UK before being returned to Zambia for curation. Now we go to Valencia in Spain, where over a hundred Paleolithic paintings and engravings thought to be at least 24,000 years old, have been found at the single gallery cave known as Cova Dones. The cave is roughly 500 meters deep and is well known to the local community. But the ancient paintings were only noticed by archeologists in June, 2021. So far, more than 110 graphic units, including at least nine zoomorphic representations of animals located in three different zones have been identified. The animals depicted include horses, female red deer, aurochs, and a stag. The rest of the art consists of rectangles and meanders, several panels of flutings, which are made with either fingers or tools that are dragged through across a soft surface, isolated lines, and poorly preserved unidentified paintings. The large number of motifs and the variety of techniques involved in their creation make Cova Donas the most important Paleolithic cave art site on the eastern Mediterranean coast of the Iberian Peninsula. In fact, it is probably one of the most important Paleolithic cave painting discoveries that we've made in Europe since 2015. Our next story is also from Spain, where a new study of woven grass sandals has found them to be around 6,000 years old, making them Europe's oldest shoes. They come from the burial site of Cueva de los Murcielagos in southern Iberia, which was first found during 19th century mining activities and contained the best preserved hunter-gatherer basketry in southern Europe. It was found together with other unique organic artifacts associated with our first farming communities, including a wooden hammer. The low humidity and cool winds in the cave kept the items unusually well preserved. New dating techniques have shown that the collection of 76 objects found in the cave were about 2,000 years older than was previously thought. Some of these objects in the set actually date back 9,000 years. The sandals in particular date to the Neolithic period, making them older than the 5,500-year-old leather shoes previously discovered in a cave in Armenia back in 2008. Now we head to Egypt, where previously unknown storage rooms have been found inside the Pyramid of Sahura, the second king of the fifth dynasty in the Old Kingdom of Egypt. He was the first king to be buried at the site of Abu Sir. 
At the time of construction, his pyramid was around 47 meters high with an inner core made of roughly hewn stones organized in steps and held together in many sections with a thick mortar of mud. This construction technique, which is much cheaper and faster to execute than the previously used stone-based techniques from the more famous pyramids at Giza, fared much worse over time. Owing to this, Sahara's pyramid is now largely ruined and amounts to little more than a pile of rubble. In terms of the size, volume, and cheap construction techniques employed, Sahura's pyramid exemplifies the decline of pyramid building. In 2019, a conservation and restoration program was begun for this pyramid. It focused on cleaning the interior rooms, stabilizing it from the inside, and preventing further collapse. In the process, the team succeeded in securing the pyramid's burial chambers, which had previously been inaccessible. Traces of a low passageway that had already been noticed during an excavation in 1836 then continued to be excavated. Now, this passage has been fully uncovered and has led to the discovery of eight internal storerooms inside the pyramid. Although the northern and southern parts of these magazines or rooms, especially the ceiling and original floor, are badly damaged, Remnants of the original walls and parts of the floor can still be seen. Careful documentation of the floor plan and dimensions of each storage room has greatly enhanced our understanding of this pyramid's interior. This groundbreaking project represents a significant milestone in the understanding of the Sahura Pyramid and its historical significance. The discovery and restoration of the storerooms is expected to revolutionize the view of historical developments of pyramid structures. Our next story takes us to India, where archaeologists have found unique ancient terracotta figurines at Mudu Kanajay near Mudbidri in Karnataka. The figurines have been dated back to 800 to 700 BCE. The figurines themselves were found to represent two bovine figures, one mother goddess, two peacocks, a horse, a hand of a mother goddess, and another unknown object. The site itself is a megalithic dolmen site, consisting of nine dolmens on the slope of a stone hill. However, only two of them remain intact, and the rest of the burials have been ruined. One of the figurines, standing at 9 centimeters in height and 5 centimeters in width, displays a distinctive bull's head atop a human body. Notably, it exudes a feminine structure, with two arms unfortunately damaged. Finding terracotta figurines in a megalithic context like this is very rare in India. We move west now to Turkey, where excavations at the ancient Roman city of Aizanoi, where a cosmetics and jewelry shop has been uncovered during excavations of the 2,000-year-old shops in the ancient city's marketplace. The shop's purpose was identified by the many perfume bottles, beads from decorated accessories from like hairpins and necklaces, and makeup kits still containing brightly colored eyeshadow and blush, almost all of them in shades of red and pink, and amounting to around 10 different colors overall. The team also found numerous oyster shells in the shop, which makes sense as Romans were known to have stored their eyeshadows and blushers in oyster shells. Next, we go south to Israel, where a cache of excellently preserved Roman weapons have been discovered in a cave overlooking the Dead Sea. They were found in a near inaccessible crevice by a team originally photographing an ancient inscription on a stalactite. The cache consists of a pilum, which is a javelin, and four swords. Three of the swords, whose blades are around 60 to 65 centimeters long, were still in their ancient wooden scabbards. Three have been identified as Roman spatha, or long swords, while the fourth, shorter weapon, has been identified as a ring pommel sword. And it's been suggested that the weapons were hidden in the cave by Judean rebels who took them from Roman soldiers as booty or from the battlefield. It was likely that they were purposely hidden for reuse, possibly during the second major Jewish revolt against the Roman Empire in Judea, the Bar Kokhba revolt, which occurred from 132 to 135 CE. The team will be carrying out further research on the cave to try and find out who might have owned the swords and where, when, and by whom they were manufactured. There is also a really cool video by the Israel Antiquities Authority that they made about and during this discovery, which I have linked here and below for you to watch if you're so interested. Our penultimate discovery today brings us to Norway, where a metal detectorist has unearthed rare 6th 
century gold jewelry in a discovery archaeologists have hailed as Norway's gold find of the century. The cache consists of nine gold medallions and gold pearls that once formed an opulent necklace, as well as three gold rings. It was found on an island near Stravanger in August. The gold pendants dated from the migration period in Norway, a time between 400 and 500 CE when there were widespread migrations in Europe. The symbols on the pendants showed the Norse god Odin healing the sick horse of his son. The horse's tongue hangs out on the gold pendants, and its slumped posture and twisted legs show that it was injured. The horse symbol represented illness and distress, but at the same time, hope for healing and new life. Given the location of the discovery and what we know from other similar finds, this is probably a matter of either hidden valuables or an offering to the gods during dramatic times. In line with Norwegian law, the detectorist and the landowner will receive a reward for the find, although the sum has not yet been determined. Our last discovery for this month comes from northwest China in Shangxi province where archaeologists have discovered the tomb of the founding emperor of the northern Zhou dynasty in the city of Xianyang. The tomb, which faces south, is a single-chamber soil cave tomb with four patios in the sloping tomb passage. The total length is 56.84 meters from north to south, and the tomb itself is 10 meters below the current ground surface. It is a medium-sized tomb for this time period. It was previously looted, but 146 burial objects have been found so far, mainly pottery figurines. Based on the epitaph on the eastern side of the tomb's entrance, archaeologists have determined that the owner was the Emperor Yu Wenju, who lived for just 15 short years from 542 to 557 CE and only reigned for less than a year before he was killed by his cousin and regent. The discovery of this tomb is of great significance to historical research on emperors of the Northern Dynasty. That's it for our top discoveries. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this segment, don't forget to like the video. Now we're going to move on to current news and events. The National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne, Australia has announced their 2024 Winter Masterpieces Blockbuster Exhibition Pharaoh which will showcase more than 500 individual pieces from the British Museum's permanent collection in the largest international loan the London Institution has ever undertaken. The exhibition includes fragments of everyday life found in the village of Deir el Medina, as well as more famous pharaonic treasures, including the carved green siltstone head of Tutmosis III and the golden plaque of Amenemhat the fourth Pharaoh exhibition will encompass the entire ground floor of the gallery featuring massive architecture and sculpture and will be divided into seven thematic sections that detail the Pharaoh's roles and duties, including the high priest of officiating the temples, the head of the country's administration, the leader of the army and the head of the royal family. The exhibition will run from June 14 to October 6, 2024. Tickets are available to purchase now. Next, a part of China's Great Wall has been severely damaged by construction workers who used an excavator to dig through it. Police say that two people are suspected of trying to create a shortcut for their work by widening an existing cavity of the Great Wall so that their excavator could pass through it. Police say they wanted to reduce the distance that they had to travel. The two suspects have been detained and the case is under further investigation. In similarly sad news, at the end of September, someone cut down a famous 300-year-old sycamore tree that stood next to Hadrian's Wall in the UK. Known as the Sycamore Gap Tree or the Robin Hood Tree, it was located in a dramatic dip in the landscape and was a popular photographic subject, described as one of the most photographed trees in the country. It derived its nickname from featuring in a prominent scene in the 1991 film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. The tree appeared to have been cut down deliberately with a chainsaw at the base of its trunk with a white line spray painted on it just below the cut. And this was done during a windstorm that would have kept most people inside and covered any noise from the chainsaw. The nature of the cut and the evident sharpness of the saw led police and park rangers to conclude it had been done by somebody with considerable skill. Police arrested a 16-year-old boy on the day that the news broke in connection with the felling on suspicion of causing criminal damage. A man in his 60s was also arrested the next day, but since then both have been released on bail. 
a national trust manager has said that the stump seemed healthy and thought that the tree could possibly be regrown, although it would take a few years to develop into even a small tree and around 150 to 200 years before it is anywhere close to what has been lost. Additionally, it has also just come out that part of Hadrian's Wall has been damaged, presumably by the falling of the tree, although we don't know the extent of the damage yet. That is the end of current news and events. We'll close our program today talking about archaeology and entertainment and pop culture. We have two entertainment stories for September, both of which concern the world's second most popular archaeologist in pop culture, Lara Croft. During a Nintendo Direct event, it was announced that the first three Tomb Raider games, originally released in 1996, 1997, and 1998, are being remastered for re-release on February 14, 2024. The games will not only feature updated visuals, but they will include all of the expansions and secret levels for each game. Players will be able to toggle between the original polygon look and updated visuals whenever they desire. The games will be available on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC. About a week later, Netflix announced Tomb Raider, The Legend of Lara Croft, an animated series picking up after the events of the most recent game trilogy, charting Lara's next chapter as she takes on the role of the iconic Tomb Raider. No word on its exact release date yet, but you can be sure that Inside Archaeology will keep you updated on when you can watch. I'm very excited for both of these announcements, not only because I'm a fan of the franchise, but also because it means I'll have some new games and TV to review for you on this channel once they're available. All right, everyone. Time to pack up our finds and hang up our shovels for today. Did you like this video? Is there something important that I missed? Don't forget to comment, like the video, or subscribe to the channel before you leave. If you are feeling extra generous, you can give me a super thanks or go to my Ko-fi page and support me with a small donation. I really appreciate you taking a few seconds to support me in any way that you can as it helps the channel grow so that I can continue to provide you with quality heritage content that you can trust is well sourced, researched, and presented by someone who is an expert in this subject. Thank you so much for watching. Stay curious, and I hope to see you on my next adventure into the world of archaeology.